Hey y'all, I'm Tammy, and this is Collard Valley Cooks. Today we are making a meatloaf. This is my tomato sauce meatloaf out of our first cookbook. It is absolutely delicious. Let's get started. All right, the recipe calls for eight ounces of tomato sauce. I've got a 15 ounce can, so I'll be using half of it. I'm gonna mix up some of it first and then add my beef to it. So we're gonna add about half a can of tomato sauce. About five shakes of Worcestershire. Quarter cup of brown gravy mix. Half of the bell pepper diced. A medium onion. It all in there. Mix that up. Two raw eggs. One. Now, this recipe is in our first cookbook. It is Chris's mama's recipe, but I kind of spruced it up just a little bit. And I asked you to use stuffing mix in it. The main thing is that my mama always, always used oatmeal, but oatmeal will make it have a slimy texture. Um, now that we have quick oats like we do, they grind them a lot finer than they did years ago. And so it makes the texture of the meatloaf kind of slimy. And uh, so if you've always used oatmeal and you've noticed that, it's because they grind our uh, quick oats a lot more than they did when we were kids. Instead of that, I prefer to use a dry stuffing mix or a sleeve of crackers. So I'm using a half sleeve of crackers today. And now all we're gonna do is add our ground beef, this in here, and then I'm gonna get a little bit more ground beef It calls for two pounds of ground beef, and this is a little bit more than two pounds. So I'm not gonna quite use all of this one, but most of it. And we're gonna mix this up, and I like to do it with my hands the most. So that's what we're gonna do. And then we're gonna get it in this meatloaf pan. It is sprayed. So let's mix up our meatloaf, y'all. When you mix all that stuff up together, it's a little easier to get it incorporated, but either way, you gotta mix it a lot with your hands, um, and it's the best way. If you don't want to use your hands, then use a stand mixer. It'd probably be the best thing to use with a paddle. Don't use a wire whisk in it. My onions are sticking to my bowl. All right, that looks good. It looks big. I think it'll fit though. We're gonna see. I'm gonna try to shape it a little bit and then lay it in there. Now this one's pretty big, so it might take it a little longer to cook. I'll do half and half. I 
That's a big meatloaf. But we're having a big crowd tonight. We'll top it with tomato sauce once it gets about done. Actually, we'll top this with, um, my mama's meatloaf has a good topping, but I just use ketchup on this one, okay? So we'll be topping it with ketchup. If you've not seen this pan, if you lift it up, it does have some room at the bottom for some of the grease to go, which is good. Uh, this is so much ground beef. I may actually sit this inside of another pan to make sure that the grease doesn't run over in my oven because I stuffed it. All right. All right. Typically, I don't make one this big. Since it's so full, I'm going to sit it inside of another pan just in case this ground beef has enough grease that it wants to run over. All right. Uh, it's better to be safe than sorry. You don't want a big mess in your oven. So we're going to put this in the oven. And this one said to bake it for 40 minutes. I'm going to bake this one at least an hour because it is so big. All right. So here's our meatloaf going in. We're going to have a feast. I'm just going to try to pour a little bit of the gray salt before I put the ketchup on it. This pan separates the meat and the grease. Nice. All right, so we're going to put meat. We're going to put some ketchup on our meatloaf and get it back in the oven. And cook it about the last 20 minutes with ketchup on it. All right, it's time to get the meatloaf out of the oven. And it took it a long time to cook. Oh, I just got my mitten and my ketchup. And I'm going to lift it out of this pan. And slide it onto my tray. I may have to go underneath it first. Now, I drained the grease out of this when I put my ketchup on, if you're wondering, when I did it. And I just take a knife and I just go right under the meatloaf and down the edge and then you can just slide it off onto your tray simple dimple I'm gonna slice it up y'all I love this little meatloaf pan it was on sale the other day Does a good job. Make some good meatloaf. Now this meatloaf is modeled after Chris's mama's meatloaf. I put a couple of extra things in it, but she primarily used onion, bell pepper, and tomato sauce. All right. Um, and those are the two, I guess the three main ingredients in this one. So, we're going to dig into this and give it a taste. We are about to have a big family meal, so we got a lot of good sides to go along with it. But one of my favorites with meatloaf is cream potatoes. And let me tell you this, there's nothing better than a meatloaf sandwich the next day. Mmm. Mm, good. Delicious. You just can't beat a good old meatloaf. We'll see you next time on Collard Valley Cook, where we cook like our mamas did. See you next time. Love ya.